What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video. I told you it was a double upload kind of day earlier this morning We uploaded a Kimball Walker Thunder rebuild if you guys are interested in that That is also in the channel obviously and today we're doing a Utah Jazz offseason realistic rebuild Because they got eliminated in the second round by the Los Angeles Clippers. So uh, The Utah Jazz man, they are down bad right now because this was their best chance I feel like this year to win a championship and they blew it uh, this was the most wide open it would have ever been with all the injuries in the West and Fortunately, they just weren't able to do it. Kawhi being out opened up a huge window of opportunity, and Paul George just went to another level, and unfortunately, Utah just could not overcome that. So, if you guys enjoy this video, make sure to smash that like button. Of course, the goal is always 200 likes. Uh, this is a Utah team, a small market team, so if you guys could hit that like button, it means so, so much to me. But then, guys, also hit that sub button on the road to 20,000 subs. Well, let's go ahead and jump in to this Utah Jazz offseason realistic rebuild. Jazz are going to have a lot of question marks going into the offseason. So, personally, I feel like this team has reached its ceiling, uh, but I feel like Portland reached its ceiling, my favorite team, by the way, uh, a couple years ago, and they still ran it back. I feel like what Utah will do, I know they're not going to want to trade Gobert or anything like that. So, I feel like what they're going to do is this team is relatively going to stay somewhat the same, but I imagine they're still going to try to make like an upgrade somewhere, right? It's not just going to be like, oh, they're running it back with the same roster, but uh, the core will still be like Conley, Gobert, Mitchell. I feel like they'll definitely try to resign Mike Conley, and then maybe they feel like they could maybe trade Joe Ingles or Bojan because they have big contracts for something different or just something along the lines of that. We'll have to see kind of the direction Utah goes in. Personally, I feel like this team uh, might have to eventually look into trading Rudy, Rudy Gobert. I don't know if this team will ever win a championship but hey you never know man they were the first seed and like i said man their window of opportunity was wide open i know they had some injuries themselves but Kawhi being out was a huge huge opportunity to make it to the west conference finals unfortunately it is that they just didn't take advantage now uh there was some question about quinn steiner potentially being on the hot seat i doubt it quinn steiner is such a good head coach i don't think he's going to go anywhere so all i'm going to do is just get a better trainer here and that's all i'm going to do for the staff uh, is concerned um we are not um can we sign Randy Martin? Okay, so we got Randy Martin. All right, now let's go to the NBA draft. So for the NBA draft, the Utah Jazz, do we, uh, I believe, yeah, we have the 29th pick. Okay, so um, as far as, like I said, there is a lot of salaries Utah can flip uh, because they do have a lot of players under contract. So there is definitely ways this team can get better. It's just a matter of, I don't know how much better. Ingles isn't expiring. I know Ingles has been an awesome player for the Utah Jazz organization. But, I mean, you have to look yourselves in the mirror, man. Your window of opportunity was wide open, and you did not take advantage. Something needs to change. Uh, it almost feels, and it's almost similar to my Portland Trailblazers, uh, where we should have obviously won the first round series, but unfortunately got bounced out. So, changes need to happen. I feel like Utah should have won this series once Kawhi was out, and they just didn't. So, you kind of have to make some changes. And Utah has been to the playoffs a lot with Donovan Mitchell and Gobert, and each time they're either making it to the second round or getting elimin eliminated in the first round. So, Things need to change here. Um, what it's going to be, I don't know who they're going to get or what changes they're going to make. I just feel like there will be changes. So uh, I feel like a trade is on the horizon, obviously. I don't know who they would potentially trade for, um, but we definitely got to find a way to upgrade this roster because it's just not working with the way it is right now. So I'm going to look around the league real quick. I, like I said, we need a, we kind of need another offensive option. I mean, Mike Conley is great. Clarkson is great. Honestly, I think it's just a matter of getting more uh, players I, I i mean just upgrading the bench pieces i for the most part i love this team they have a lot of good uh things going around this team but for the most part i feel like it's just upgrading i guess and maybe getting a different change here so i'm gonna look around the league for what you know might be that and i'm gonna see if i can find anything that might help us get better because that's what we need right now so the two ways i see that you know you know the two guys uh you talk could potentially go after that would definitely be of help now i thought of kevin love uh for the first part but i don't know man like kevin love would be cheap to get it's just how much of an upgrade is he really and then another one i thought of utah could grab like detroit pistons jeremy grant i feel like jeremy grant is someone they could maybe snag uh you know utah isn't gonna have a ton of assets by any means they have first round picks but utah is a good team so no one's gonna value their, their picks that high but um they could maybe throw in a young player that they have down here like elijah hughes udoka azabuki throw them into detroit throw them in a package maybe get jeremy grant from Detroit. I just don't know what else the Jazz are going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and offer a trade package of Jeremy Grant. Of course, I want to start off with giving them some young players like Udoka Azabuki and uh, also like Elijah Hughes because obviously you, uh, Detroit's in a rebuild. So they're going to want players like that. And then you got Joe Ingles expiring. You got Bojan Madonovic, uh, who's making two years. I imagine 
Detroit, you know, they could take the Oklahoma City Thunder route and take on Bojan for a first round pick or whatever. Uh, but I don't think Bojan, uh, I mean, like in, none of these guys were really the problem necessarily. It's just a team as a whole just didn't just they, they just choked, man. So you could either trade like I know they're not going to trade. Actually, you could maybe throw Derek Favors in there personally because he's only on a one year deal. So maybe you throw Derek Favors in there um who has a 10 million dollar player option but i imagine Derek favors isn't going to want to stay in detroit even if he does it's not like detroit's in a rush of anything and we're still like a million off man okay um and okay wait do one of these guys have team options so yeah maybe we accept one of these team options real quick i wish uh 2k gave you an option to accept a team option before um uh let's say oni yeah let's throw oni in there so i yeah i wish 2k would uh allow you to accept a team option before the draft because that is something that does happen uh, quite often in real life, I went to the wrong thing. So I wish 2K would do that, but unfortunately, they just don't. Uh, you just kind of have to, you know, roll with 2K's rules and stuff. So let me accept that real quick because that would help us in order to get this Jeremy Grant trade to go through. So let's go back to this. And like I said, we're going to throw these three core players in here. Oni, um, I guess maybe we do, uh, actually, I'll throw you Doka as a bookie. Let me try this again. Dark favors. Okay, so we'd have to trade. And then also you give up Elijah Hughes. And maybe in this situation, you wouldn't have to give up a first. You get three young players um, who could definitely be a core to Utah or to Detroit one day. Who knows? I mean, if you wanted to throw your 29th pick in there as well, you can. So Detroit gets the first round pick out of it. So this trade package for Jeremy Grant. Detroit uh, gets uh, young players and a pick for uh, Jeremy Grant. And we get a power forward in Jeremy Grant who might be an upgrade to us. So that's kind of... And he would be a nice fit next to Gobert, too. He wouldn't be too bad uh, as well. So, I like that. Um, we're cool with that. So, we'll move uh, Boyan to small forward. Honestly, I'm not sold on Boyan and Joe Ingles right now my small forward spot. I could trade both of them together or uh, differently. I don't know, man. I I'm still not sold on it. I don't know why I wanted the draft. We might have a second. Or do we have a second? We do. Okay. So, let me go ahead and draft some of the second pick. Um, got Chris Smith on the board. Kai Jones. Uh, Oscar. Uh, the, 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 however you say his name, I'm just sending the end on that. And boom, we get a 73 overall coming in. Player options, Matt Thomas will go and accept it. Qualifying offers, we got Trent Forrest and uh, Juwan Morgan. And then when you go into free agency, um, obviously, we don't have uh, money other than maybe just re-signing Mike Conley, like I mentioned already. So uh, I feel like they'd maybe give Mike Conley like a two or three year deal. I feel like that makes a lot of sense for Utah. I mean, you don't have money, so you can't afford to let a guy like Mike Conley go. Unless if you were going to do some kind of Sign a trade for somebody else, but I don't think Mike Conley was a problem. He really played very well for Utah this season. It was the first season was Utah when it was kind of a struggle, but he definitely got better. Um, so, I mean, other than that, we do have a mid-level, I think, that we can use. So let's try to use that as well. Um, as far as where we should use it at, uh, maybe the backup point guard spot or a backup. I guess we could use a backup big man as well. So um, David Nwamba, we don't necessarily need a small forward right now. Batum could be an option. Uh, Taj Gibson, a veteran backup center. And Taj Gibson or the point guard spot, we could uh, throw Tanaransky a contract who could be a nice veteran point guard off the bench for us. So, yeah, maybe throw him some money to play uh, in the backcourt when we don't have Conley out there. So, that's cool. So, we'll have that. And then um, we still need a backup big man. So, I guess we could throw uh, Dwayne Dedman a, a contract, you know, be a nice backup center in Utah. So Ursan Ali Silva contract. We have George's name, who actually was pretty good at times for them. I didn't even realize he was out here. So we'll offer him a contract as well. Just a simple one year. And then um, other than that, I think that's all we have for us. So we got Jeremy Grant. We have Ingles and Bojan. Now I'm still indecisive. Do I want to trade these two for a better small forward or something along the lines of that? Do we want to go that route or it just, I don't know, man. Like, do we go that route? Do we trade for a better small forward or is that just something we don't really need to do right now? So... I guess I can look around the league real quick, kind of scan the market. Um, you got Harrison Barnes, but how much of an upgrade is he really? Um, I think, I believe that TJ Warren also could be interesting, honestly. Because, uh, you know, Indiana may not be interested in keeping TJ Warren. So maybe Utah takes a chance on TJ Warren coming off an injury, um, you know, before the bubble or in the bubble. He was like going off, looked like MJ out there. So. I guess that could be an option. So maybe we go ahead and like I said, we're going all in here, right? So let's go uh, try to snag TJ Warren, who would be a 85 small forward for us. He's going to be a lot younger than Ingles and Bojan. So um, let's say we threw, um, well, I guess if uh, Indiana was trading him, they'd probably want to trade like, uh, it would be like a Joe Ingles for uh, TJ Warren swap, right? And then you give 
a 2020 uh, five pick or something along the lines of that. So just kind of something like this. Would they accept this? They don't agree to that. I'll also throw you a second. They still don't agree and another second and they still don't agree. Okay. Maybe we throw a player in here as well that we could maybe throw in here. Like uh, we have uh, Matt Thomas who they might like. Nope. Okay. Uh, I'll still throw another second in here. They still don't agree. And I'll throw you Oscar. I only, I'm only doing this because I think Joe Ingles is going to go down in overall, to be honest. So they still don't agree. Wow. TJ Warren's a lot harder than I thought. I don't know if I want to throw three second rounders for a guy coming off injury. So maybe I'm just saying no thanks because I honestly, I guess unless if uh, I'm throwing Royce O'Neal on this trade, which I don't know if I'd love to do that if I'm Utah. So maybe we just keep Ingles for now because uh, yeah, I'm not loving... Uh, Trying to trade for TJ Warren if he costs that much. Play progression wise, this is what I was afraid of. Ingles goes down three overall. Boyan's down one overall. So yeah, obviously the team is just kind of getting down in overall right now. So for now, I think I'll just keep it the way it is. At the trade deadline, I think we might be looking into trading Boyan and Joe Ingles together. Uh, we'll just kind of see how it goes. Uh, but for now, we'll keep them uh, with the upgrade of Jeremy Grant to the team. Hopefully that makes a huge impact. And uh, we can kind of, you know, be very interesting this West. They already were. And this should make us at least better. So we'll see what kind of happens. And hopefully uh, by the end of the year, we're still a top team in the West. And maybe we're the first seed again. But this time we actually win it all. So the Indiana Pacers agreed to my offer for the TJ Warren trade I tried to do earlier. I feel like I probably gave up too much. But TJ Warren this year is literally averaging 12 points. So yeah, I definitely gave up too much. I don't even want to show you the trade because I know I gave up too much. Um, but they sucked. The Pacers still sucked. And, uh, yeah, the trade was just too much. I feel like I, I kind of regret that. But so it was Joe Ingles two first. I feel like Utah could probably get away with just trading like one first and a young player. Maybe, maybe not even that. Maybe just trading like one first because you no know, Indiana maybe just wants to get off TJ Warren. So yeah, I mean, TJ Warren is an upgrade overall wise here in 2k right now. We're 28, 26, but I mean, it definitely makes the roster interesting, right? TJ Warren coming in would be honestly uh, a really nice addition along with Jeremy Grant we already grabbed as well and the starting five looks you know offensively more balanced and defensively it's there too as well so I mean you can only hope with the upgrades we've made that this would just turn into uh, maybe a good season for us so I guess the only other thing maybe I would like to do is maybe I move Dwayne Deadman to the power forward spot because he goes up like crazy to an 80 overall so we'll have Dwayne Deadman uh, down here in Bojan Thomas Aranski. I mean, yeah, I feel like that's the best we can kind of do right now. Royce and y'all uh, probably should be getting some minutes as well, but I'm running a, ten, a nine minute rotation. So yeah, um, we're going to go ahead and just keep simulating right now. We're a uh, three and a half star at defense. So do we move at anywhere and come a four? No, we do not. So maybe I should just move this to a balanced system because everybody fits a little bit better. We're going to move this to a balanced system. We're going to keep simulating and hopefully uh, by the end of the year, we turn the season around a little bit more. And with the new Utah Jazz roster, who knows what can happen? I think we got a funky simulation because 2K does not like the Utah Jazz as much as Utah Jazz are in real life. You know what I mean? How good they are in real life. 2K does not agree with that. This team went 42 and 40 and we somehow finished as the fifth seed. So sometimes, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed, if you do your own rebuild, sometimes you just get the weirdest simulations. Like, like let's just see how many, like uh, last season they went 44 and 38. I, I'm kind of interested to see uh, the standings right now. So, okay, in New Orleans went... 58 and 24 so never mind i thought it was going to kind of be like a little bit of a bug where i guess the western conference was just trash i guess whatever so we're the fifth seed um we'll take it i guess i don't know usually 42 and 40 sometimes doesn't even get into the playoffs in 2k or not in 2k in real life uh 25 points from donovan mitchell 19 points from jeremy grant 16 from jordan clarkson 16 from mike conley 14 from tj warren uh 12 15 and uh, you know your usual two blocks from gobert and then Bojan with 11, Top Sander and Scoot 5, and Dwayne Dedman with 3.6. So, uh, like I said, we are playing the Golden State Warriors, so we're definitely going to be tested right away. Golden State is no joke. We got Steph, Clay, Wiggins, Pascal, James Wiseman, Greg Brown, Odipo, and Jordan Poole. So, Odipo's on this roster. I find that very interesting. So, many in game one, uh, they're up 1-0. to zero. So, I think at this point, uh, we probably uh, kind of use this to an A-man rotation. I mean, Utah, if you get bounced out again, you just... You don't want to think of the future, man. I mean, it's just if you, especially if you lose in the first round, that just would not be a good luck. So even up the series, yes, we do. Okay, box score wise, 25 from uh, James Wiseman, 31 for Jeremy Grant, 25 and 10 from Donovan Mitchell. Game three, we're up two to one, so that's a really good look right now. 31 and nine. If we could take a three to one lead here, that would be actually really awesome. And we do three to one lead, and uh, we got Conley Gobert with 28 rebounds, man. What a beast. 
Uh, 25 for Stephen Curry. Do we finish them out in five games? Yes, we do. We're on to the second round to play either the Pelicans or the Rockets. So who would I rather play, to be honest? Probably the Rockets because the Pelicans are always a super team in this damn game. But hey, you never know. And we get to play the New Orleans Pelicans like I thought. So New Orleans, uh, they probably have BJ Boston. Just kidding. They have Bledsoe still. Okay, so we have a chance. Never mind. Lonzo Ball, Bledsoe, Ingram, Zion, Adams, BJ Boston. Bro, the New Orleans Pelicans always draft BJ Boston. Like every time. Why is Bledsoe starting over him? I don't get I don't get that, though. To be honest. So do we stand a get do we stand a chance to get this New Orleans team? I would like to think so, but you know, 2K. Like I said, New Orleans is no joke. So we'll see what happens. Game one, they're up one to zero. Like I said, 30 from Brandon Ingram, 29 to 10 from Zion, 17 to 17. So yeah, a lot of you know, very underwhelming game uh for most of our guys. Okay. Here we are, game three. We're, uh, we even it up. Okay, so we're not, you know, going down two to zero or anything. That's a good look. 26 from TJ Warren, 24 and 10 from Donovan Mitchell. Game three, we're up two to one. Okay, 26, seven and nine, 19 and 23 from Gobert. Do we go up three to one here? Yes, we do. 32, eight and eight from Mitchell, 21 and seven and nope, three to two. Okay, so 25 and 13 from Zion, 29 and 12 from Donovan Mitchell, 27 from Conley was not good enough to close them out. I honestly think I should probably simcast because we cannot afford to go to a game seven in New Orleans. Can we close them out here in Utah and go on to the Western Conference Finals? We cannot. We lose by three points. 27 and 12 from Donovan Mitchell. 33 from Brandon Ingram. Okay, man. Uh, winner gets to face the Los Angeles Lakers. Go to New Orleans for this game. Do we have it in us to win in game seven on the road, man? Let's see. Come on. We had a prime lead. Three to one lead. Do we blow it again? Do we blow this again? We do. Utah blows another three to one lead in the second round. Literally one game away from the Western Conference Finals. That would not be a good look for this organization. So do the Pelicans go on to beat the Lakers? They do not. The Lakers go on to win the championship. Uh, I imagine they had Russell Westbrook probably. Um, no, they didn't. Okay. So uh, Cam Thomas, Montrose, Harold Tower, Johnson. So maybe we would have beat this team. Who knows? Uh, we lost, man. It is what it is. We were one game away from the Western Conference Finals. At least that's progress, I guess. I mean... I don't know, man. Let's go to the draft lottery, and uh, we'll give this another season. Obviously, we're not just going to give up just yet. So uh, we're not going to have a draft pick here. Obviously, we kind of went all in trying to make this roster really good. I mean, at this point, I think I'll fire my assistants real quick. We'll grab Mike D'Antoni. Sure, why not? And then we'll grab Trent Peterson. Just upgrade the coaching staff as much as possible. So let's go to the draft now. And on draft night, I don't think there's much we're going to be able to do. Uh, we have no picks, and Gobert's going down overall, I guess. I mean, the bench needs an upgrade, too. So another mid-level will definitely be helpful, I guess. So let's go to player options now. Player options, nothing. And then qualifying offers. Um, We'll go ahead and throw a qualifying offer at Matt Thomas, just in case. And then free agency ahead of us. We got TJ Warren wanting $27 million, man. Oh, my God, dude. Like, seriously? You really think you're worth that much? You're not. You're not worth that much money, bro. Uh, I just don't get that. Okay. Well, what do we got right now? So we have Mitchell, Sanaransky. We have Clarkson, Mitchell, which I love Jordan Clarkson, obviously. A huge part of the Jazz bench. Royce O'Neal, I feel like obviously wasn't getting minutes, uh, which was honestly we could trade for another guy here, to be honest, with the amount of salary we still have on the roster. So Boyan, Royce O'Neal. Um, I feel like Royce O'Neal should be a little bit better than what he is in 2K. Uh, and then um, I guess let's just see what our mid-level gives us. So our mid-level, we could sign Daniel Tyus, Willie Collie Stein. I think Daniel Tyus would actually be really nice, maybe to back up. Uh, Jeremy Grant that actually might be an interesting uh, guy to sign so we're gonna go ahead and throw Daniel Tice a contract uh, why not we'll sign uh, we'll renounce Matt Thomas I guess and then TJ Warren man I just don't know if I'm feeling that 27 million dollar contract bro just say uh, that's steep man that's really steep I'll give you like I feel like even that is just kind of I mean this is overpay by a mile um, actually I'm going to decline that. I don't want to renounce his rights, though, but I'm declining that. And I'm going to sign you again, but I'm going to give you like a, a two-year team option kind of thing because I – never mind. He's like, get it. Okay, you want to decline my contract? Fine, I'm going to go somewhere else. Okay, so TJ Warren walks away for too much money. You know what? That's fine. Whatever. I mean, I don't think I wanted to pay him that much anyway. So the next route to go is to trade uh, Bojan and Royce O'Neal together and go for somebody else, I guess, because – we lost TJ Warren, and that was unfortunate. So I guess we'll go a different route and try to trade some for somebody else here. And honestly, I'm looking at OG Anunoby, and I feel like he would just be the guy to bring here, man. So that's who I'm going to try to snag from uh, Toronto. I just don't know if they'd be down for this. So let's say I threw them Royce O'Neal. They, they can't. Okay, what if I threw them 
Bojan's contract. Okay, Bojan for OG Nobi gets the conversation started, I guess. So here we are trading even more picks that I don't really want to trade. Okay, um, I'll throw you a second and another second. I mean, at this point, we literally have no assets. So yeah, I mean, it makes sense that they wouldn't accept that trade. I don't have a young player to really throw them either. So I guess Bojan and Royce O'Neal, does that get any conversations going? It does not. So um, one trade offer. Wow, one trade offer. Okay, um, Osman, Terrence Mann, I <laughs> imagine. Terrence Mann just had the game of their game of his life against Utah in game seven. Okay. Um, I maybe, okay. Maybe this is what we do. Um, maybe we wait till after, um, let's see. We have like any, I don't, do we have anybody like coming back on a qualifying offer? If we don't, this is, uh, going to be very, okay. So we got Trent Forrest coming back on a qualifying offer. Mike Conley goes down in overall. So Bojan goes down in overall. So his value just tanks even more. Okay. Um, let me go back to this and is Walter Forrest going to get the conversation going a little bit more? Probably not. Uh, but hey, we'll try it anyway. So let's say uh, Trent Forrest is in here. Yeah, he's got a one star rating. So they're probably not going to be down for this. I'll give you a first and uh, not go bear, obviously. And I'll give you another first. Okay, they don't agree. All right, well, maybe I have to get a little bit more creative here. Maybe someone else needs to be traded on our core. So um, Sadaransky, he's got a two star rating and you give me uh, Fakandu Kambazo, three million off. Okay. Um, do you have anybody making like uh, those guys are young players? Yeah, it's just Doug McDermott. They're probably not accept that. Okay, so yeah, it's not looking good. TJ losing TJ Warren was not good at all. Um, we have like Russell Nail to small forward spot, which isn't. You know what, Eric Gordon? Why not? I I don't see how else we get better. So Eric Gordon uh, goes up at small forward at a 77 overall. I mean, sure, we lost TJ Warren. That was very bad. Uh, he would not have gotten that much in real life anyway, um, but it is what it is. Unless if he just has a crazy, crazy, crazy year. But uh, Eric Gordon's our small forward. I don't know how I feel about that. Um, on top potential wise, we could throw some at, um, I guess we'll throw this at Jeremy Grant again. And we'll throw the other one at um, probably Clarkson, I guess. So we'll do that. And then power ranking lands us at number nine. This is our starting five. We have Mike Conley, Mitchell. Russell Nell, which Russell Nell is a solid player. I feel like his overall should be better, to be honest. I wouldn't mind him being my uh, starting small forward if his overall just wasn't so bad in 2K. Jeremy Grant, uh, Rudy Gobert, and uh, would you guys be mad if I kind of messed with that overall? Because I feel like he should be better than that. I don't know, man. Just when I've watched Russell Nell, I feel like he's a great 3 and D wing. I feel like he's better than a 75 overall, but maybe I'm giving him too much credit. Uh, but he joins the rotation this year. We're going to go ahead. Still at the end of the season, do we get back to the playoffs? Do we win a championship? I don't know, man. We're going to have to wait and see. Let's see if we can get to that point and uh, get back to the playoffs and let's see if we can win this championship. Weirdly enough, we finished as the first season in the West. One season, 2K loves us. The other season, they hate us. So I, I don't know. Player stats, 29 from Donovan Mitchell. Okay, so this team actually well around kind of just, I don't know. It feels like the scoring was a lot better here. 19 points off the bench from Jordan Clarkson is huge, man. Uh, he should have won sixth man of the year, but I don't think he did. 13 points from Gobert, 17. Of course, still is two blocks. Mike Conley, 20. Jeremy Grant and 29 from Donovan Mitchell. Playing the Minnesota Timberwolves, man. Um, we got DeAndre Russell, Edwards, Jared Culver, Patrick Baldwin. This is a really good team. Do we lose or do we win? So many current round against the Minnesota Timberwolves, and we beat them in five games. So that's awesome. And now we get to play the Dallas Mavericks. We have Michael Foster. Porzingis is still here. So sorry, Mavericks fans. Porzingis is not gone yet in 2K anyway. So many current round, and we lose in six games to the Dallas Mavericks, man. Okay. Playoffs and... Los Angeles Lakers win a championship with Russell Westbrook. So, yeah, I mean, at that point, if Utah were to lose in the second round again, I don't even know what they're going to do. So, uh, I'm going to leave that to the future uh, in real life. I'm not going to go another season. Uh, Utah, man, like I said, I think Utah at this point has maybe reached their ceiling, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they can upgrade in some other way. Maybe they get somebody else. I thought Jeremy Grant would be a nice addition to this team. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely leave a like if you did. But for now, this is Crushables. I'm saying peace. We'll be back tomorrow with either a Bucks or a Nets offseason realistic rebuild, depending on who gets eliminated tonight. See you guys later.